everyone. Uh, um, I'm going to um, give the second part of the talk. I'm going to introduce the uh, detail of the connected inductance detectors. Um, and I, I will do this talk in, f in, f in the following four parts. I will first introduce the superconductivity. And, uh, and also I will introduce the micro uh, resonator theory, which is the key part of the kits. And uh, I also going to demonstrate uh, how the kit works. And uh, I finally, I will introduce something in, in the noise of the kit. Uh, let's begin with the first part. Uh, Professor Smoot has already introduced that uh, the, su the superconductivity has been found in 19, 1911. And uh, one of the main, main feature of this detect uh, of this superconductor is its perfect uh, demagnetization, which means that uh, the the um, magnetic field can be completely excluded from the superconductor when the temperature is lower than its TC. And uh, people start to explain this behavior. Let's start with the. Uh, um, uh, normal resi uh, ma uh, resistance resistivity of the normal metal. Uh, in the it's a um, classical Drude model, and uh, when it's in the DC field, uh, the uh, electron will um, collision with the um, with the grid of the metal, so it will um, have uh, uh, elastic time, and uh, so it will lost energy. And uh, in the steady state, the um, the volt velocity of the electron remains constant, so it's related to the uh, steady state. Wait. So, it will um, in the steady state. This this will be the uh, electron um, velocity of the electron, which is related to the external. Um, electri electric field. So this is the Ohm law. And in the alternative cu current field, uh, which it, it, the current is changing with a single frequency, and in this way we can uh, see express the uh, velocity of the um, electron in the conductor with the uh, with uh, um, frequency omega. And uh, similarly, we have the um, expression for the normal uh, normal conductor resistivity so what will happen when this elast when the collision time going to be infinity uh, we see he we see from here that the com uh, the uh, conductivity of the material can be separated into two parts uh, the the real part and the second is the imaginary part the real part related to the um, energy dissipation in the um, conductor and uh, the, the second part is related to the energy stored in the conductor. So when the um, collision time going to be infinity, which means that uh, the, the real part of the uh, conductivity is going to be zero, and uh, the second part is going to be um, a constant, uh, uh, some is going to be related with omega. So this is the, this is the origin of the energy energy stored in the superconductor. And it, so, so let's start with the, um, start with the uh, conductor without uh, any collision. So the, the electron in the, uh, in the field will be accelerating for forever. So we can uh, see that uh, by we, we will have the <coughs> first London equation, we, which means that uh, the current will be increased uh, with, the elect, uh, with the external field without any attenuation. And uh, when we take the Faraday's law and the Ampere's law, uh, we can come to uh, this equation, and uh, which says uh, the, the magnetic field will be um, Will be uh, will be penetrated through the through the will not be penetrated through the conductor, um, but this equation shows that uh, the when the magnetic field has the initial value, 
uh, it the, the this value will be remained within the superconductor. This is dif uh, different from what we see from the Messina effect. Uh, when the field is cooled down below the critical temperature, the magnetic field is ex ex expelled from the superconductor. So when this one, so it does not uh, um, meet our requirement for the uh, explanation of the superconductivity. So we need to uh, give uh, a second London equation, uh, which says that the the ten uh, di derivative of the uh, of this equation should be zero, which mean that um, which mean that uh, the initial value should be zero, and which when this one lead to the uh, second uh, London equation, and here we can see the difference between the uh, perfect electron conductor and the superconductor. Uh, here we see when the um, when the perfect electron conductor cool down without any uh, magnetic field, the ma when we apply the magnetic field, it will not be uh, penetrated through the uh, uh, PC. And uh, when we remove the uh, external field, it will the the field will disappear. And when we cool down uh, the PC uh, with with the with a magnetic field, the field here will be trapped within the uh, within the PC, so when we remove the field, it will become a magnet. This is different from a superconductor. A superconductor is uh, something that when we uh, apply the magnetic field without any uh, external magnetic field, uh, it will uh, not allow any uh, penetration of the magnetic field into the superconductor. And uh, when we cool down with external field, uh, it will also exclude uh, uh, the expelled internal field, so the internal field still remains zero. Uh, to be honest, this kind of phenomenon uh, is not uh, so true when we measure it in the real world uh, superconductor. Mm -hmm. So there will there is a London penetration depth. It means that uh, the the magnetic field will uh, ex um, decrease exponentially in the superconductor. Um, the, the, the depth we call is the, lan uh, called, uh, the London penetration depth, uh, which is on the order of uh, 100 nanometers. And uh, another important, uh, and in 1957, uh, the the BCS uh, theory was proposed. Uh, yeah, because the mm, the the, um, the London uh, equation explains the Messina effect, but it does not uh, explain the uh, energy gap, or, or, uh, the critical temperature, or the uh, yeah, especially the critical temperature. It does not explain why it becomes a superconductor at a certain temperature. So, <coughs> in, in 1957, uh, people, uh, the BCS theory was proposed that um, the there is a certain uh, electron, electron uh, contraction, uh, attraction within the superconductor, which is uh, mainly caused by the coolant, coolant and shielding. So these two far away electrons may be attracted with each other and uh, forms a, pa a pair, a which is called a Cooper pair. And uh, when the, <coughs> the Cooper pairs are boson, so they do not <coughs> uh, obey the Pauli exclusion uh, principle, so they can be um, in the same state. So when the temperature goes down, all these uh, uh, electrons uh, combine, in combine into Cooper pairs and uh, condensed into a single state, so the uh, so there is a abrupt change we can um, um, observe in microscopic. Uh, so this is the what what caused the um, the critical temperature. So this this also indicates indicates that there is a um, pairing energy within the superconductor. And uh, according to the BCS theory, the the pairing, the pairing uh, energy is given by 3.52 uh, kBTc, 
and uh, it has uh, yes, it ex explained uh, many uh, many many uh, phenomena, and uh, it has been verified uh, exp uh, experimentally. And uh, the uh, the pair energy will decrease when the tem temperature increases. And uh, the other thing is that the the distance between the the two um, paired uh, electrons, uh, according to the um, BCR theory, the only the um, four uh, electron close to the Fermi surface can form into the uh, into Cooper pairs. So uh, <coughs> so when when the temperature is around T C, uh, the 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 energy, uh, according to the uh, uncertainty principle, uh, the, this is the uh, momentum uncertainty uh, of the um, of the electron around the Fermi surface. So uh, according to the uh, according to the unprincip uncertainty principle, uh, this the distance between the two electrons should be on the order of this value. Uh, which, which is on the order of 100 nano, nano mm, meter, which is uh, something around uh, a thousand times the lattice spacing, and uh, the coherence l length, the accurate uh, number given by the BCR theory is uh, the distance is the the factor is uh, 0 0.18. And uh, for the superconductors, there will still be um, normal electrons within the superconductor. Uh, this is uh, mainly caused uh, by the fluctuation of the lattice iron. So it will break the Cooper pairs and uh, generate some thermally excited uh, uh, quasi-particle uh, electrons that is with, uh, with energy above the uh, Fermi level. Fermi level. So and uh, the thermally excited quasi particle can be um, can be reduced by reducing the temperature, mm -hmm. and uh, the density of, of the uh, the density is given according to this equation, and uh, we can see that when the temperature decreases, the the quasi particle den uh, density will decrease uh, exponentially, and uh, the the, vo the the number of the Quasi particle is given by the the volume times the density, uh, which we will use later. So, uh, in the superconductor, the the quasi particles are in thermal equi equilibrium. So when they they can um, be break and uh, combine back into combine back to the Cooper pairs. So when when the according to the BCR theory. Uh, the the lifetime of the um, quasi particle is is given by this equation, and which says that uh, the quasi uh, the quasi the lifetime is going to be infinity, which means that it will never break in back to uh, quasi particles. But this is not true uh, in the real world. Uh, when we mm. measure um, the the real lifetime in in the superconductor, it will combine the back. Uh, the this time the the lifetime will be limited by by the material. Mm, when when there is a, a photon incident upon the superconductor, it will break uh, into Cooper pairs, and uh, so the pair energy is to delta. And uh, when when we uh, when we uh, have a um, when we break one Cooper pair, we will generate two electrons. So with the incident po power, we can determine how much Cooper pairs we can uh, generate. Uh, the the conver conversion efficiency is 0 0.7. Uh, this is mainly due to the fact that when the phonon uh, has the energy above two delta, so it will break two or more uh, Cooper pairs. And it will in, uh, it will involve the interaction with the with the phonon in the lattice. So in this way, the, the it will lose energy. So the conversion will be less. 
less than one. So the, um, it is usually um, around uh, 0 0.57. Um, Another important uh, um, uh, theory, according to the BCS theory, uh, is the multi-sparring theory that calculates the complex conductivity for the uh, for the superconductor. Uh, the the multi-sparring integral that uh, take account into the existence of the band band gap and uh, the average distance between the two electrons in the Cooper pair, and uh, it also take the effect of the pair breaking. When, when, th when the photon energy is less than two delta, which means that it cannot break the Cooper pair. So in this case, this, in, uh, this term will disappear. And uh, the, the, um, the loss in the superconductor will remain uh, small. And so when the, when, the, um, when the photon incident on the superconductor, uh, that it can break the Cooper pair. This this, this term will be relatively large, and uh, which will make the superconductor lossy. And so this is also one of the mecha mechanism that we can detect uh, the uh, photon with the keys. Uh, the two theory can be uh, simplified into uh, relatively simple equations. And uh, we can see from here uh, the the uh, the imagery part uh, is mainly related to the um, uh, the energy gap and uh, the the frequency, and uh, we can also see from here that uh, uh, the under the um, under the term that the photon energy is much much less than the um, delta, and uh, the temperature is low. We can see. Uh, the integral works quite well for this uh, uh, for the material. Uh, this is um, this is uh, true for for these kids because kids works uh, at a, at a frequency that is far below the working detection frequency, which means that when we uh, detect uh, when the kids works at uh, one gigahertz or two gigahertz, the detector photon is uh, something around uh, 150. So in this case. Uh, these two integrals works quite well for, for designing kids. And uh, another thing we need to know is the uh, um, electron, the, s the surface impedance. When we, um, when we, uh, we, when we want to uh, know the uh, response of a su superconductor, we can uh, describe the uh, superconductor w in terms of its surface impedance. And uh, for a semi-infinite conductor, the surface impedance can be defined as the, the electro, uh, e electro uh, field on the surface divided by its uh, uh, magnetic field. And let's take a look at how, this, um, how to calculate the um, uh, surface impedance from uh, Maxwell equations. Uh, here is the Maxwell equation, and uh, this is our model. Of this is the super, uh, superconductor. When we have a uh, um, single frequency uh, um, plane wave incident up upon this uh, surface, we can uh, we can know uh, that. We can by cha changing uh, the the form of the Maxwell equation, and we can get to thi this one. Uh, finally, we we got a, a wave propagation equation. That uh, that means that uh, the the gamma uh, the the electro electrical field will penetrate uh, into the um, into the conductor. Just uh, on on the um, on the order of the of, of, ga of gamma. Then we can uh, then we can calculate the uh, surface impedance by the Faraday's law, and uh, <coughs> then we will be able to get the surface impedance uh, by the definition.
So for the superconductor, um, the it has the real part and the imagery part. So the pro propagation constant can be reduced uh, uh, with with this formula. And uh, mm, after some mathematical uh, operations, we will uh, be able to uh, get the surface impedance in terms of the penetration depth and uh, the frequency. You see here, the real part is represents the loss of the mm, of this superconductor. So the sigma one is closely related, and the second part is the energy stored in the in the superconductor conductor. So uh, it's it's mainly re related to the uh, the the field penetrated into the um, con conductor. The the penetration depth is different from the London penetration depth. Uh, this one is uh, is more the electrical penetration depth, and uh, for the London penetration depth, it's the uh, magnetic field, uh, especially in the DC case, uh, because when the frequency is zero, uh, this one is infinity, and uh, uh, yeah, but for the uh, in the DC case the the static ma magnetic field still can be pen pe can penetrate the uh, the superconductor just to a certain distance. <coughs> so so oh. yeah, this is the the kinetic inductance. We can uh, calculate it by uh, divide, div dividing the imagery part of the surface impedance by omega. So uh, this is uh, a, a typical value for, for thick uh, um, film. Um, so if we take the multi-spotting theory into account, we can see that the, uh, the, the surface kinetic inductance is related to the normal resist conductivity and uh, the energy gap of the conductor. And uh, for thin film, uh, when the uh, film thickness is much smaller than the penetration depth, uh, the, the electric field inside the film can be considered as constant. So in this case, the surface impedance can be a uh, great uh, um, simplified uh, uh, greatly, and it's just uh, related to the thickness and uh, the complex uh, conductivity. So, when we take the multi-spotting theory into con consideration, the we ca we can get a, a, um, a simple expression for the surface impedance we need in designing kits, and uh, th this. The T is the thickness of the superconductor, and uh, the the rho rho is the normal resistivity of the superconductor. It's the resistivity just before it becomes superconductor, and the delta is the energy gap of the. So, we we usually prefer um, larger surf, uh, surf connecting inductance material. So there will be three ways to improve the kinetic inductance. The first way is to use the material that with higher mm, normal resistivity. And then the second one is use uh, low TC material, which will have lower delta. And uh, also we can use uh, mm, uh, uh, the film that is uh, thin. For example, uh, the 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 kits used in Nika, uh, the, the film thickness is something around the 20 nano nanometer. And uh, here, here is the uh, common material that we used in kits. Um, the, the most mature one we uh, use in the millimeter wave and the sub-millimeter wave band is the aluminum. Uh, it has uh, um, TC of about, about, about 1.2. And uh, the the 
the main drawback of the aluminum is that it has relatively low uh, connecting in, in, uh, inductance. And uh, the main advantage, uh, it is simple to fabricate and uh, quite mature. The, the, the physics of aluminum kits are well understood. And the other one uh, prefer is preferably the titanium nitride, which is also a very, very good uh, material for kits. The main, the, main, uh, the main advantage of titanium nitride is that it has relatively uh, high connecting inductance. And uh, um, the main drawback is that uh, the, if you want to make, uh, tune the, mm, yeah, we will talk about it later. And the other material is the platinum silicon, it, which is a relatively new material for, for the kits. This, is, this material is proposed to replace the titanium nitride, but the, the main uh, disadvantage of, the, of, the, of this kind of material is that it's too expensive to, to develop. Um, yeah. This is the fabrication of the titanium nitride. Um, it's the, the, t the critical temperature of the titanium nitride is usually controlled by the, the float of the, uh, nit nitrogen. So when you have a, a high nitrogen flow, you will get a higher uh, cr um, critical temperature. But usually, we want to make the critical temperature low. So in this case, it will be somewhere here, uh, ar around here. Um, so it means that when you have a little uh, fluctuation in your nitrogen uh, flow, you will get a material with quite different uh, uh, critical temperature. This is quite uh, mm, lethal, especially for the kids working in the millimeter wave band. Uh, for the millimeter wave band, the, the, uh, the critical uh, temperature of the uh, material should be uh, below one Kelvin, or around, uh, or similar to um, to aluminum. But when you have a uh, 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 kids of uh, about two uh, two Kelvin, it, it will be not be able to detect uh, the um, the signal. Uh, here is the uh, sub some uh, important e equations that we will later use to design the kits. Um, yes. Uh, next, uh, I will talk about uh, the resonator theory. Um, for for a two port, uh, for a two port uh, um, system, that we have. Uh, signal of uh, uh, voltage V1 <coughs> and the current I1 and the voltage uh, 2 and I2 here. Uh, the we, we want to describe the system in, in the power way. So we need to uh, describe uh, how much uh, power we instant and uh, reflected uh, through the system. Uh, so we use the S parameters. It's, uh, it, it is used to uh, describe the system power flow within the, within the system. S21 describe the, the power flow from port 1 to port 2, and uh, the uh, S, uh, S11 uh, reflects the, the power reflection from the port. And uh, we can, uh, it's defined uh, by the voltage and the current uh, around the port. And the other, uh, useful uh, tool is called the AB ABCD matrix, which is uh, the, uh, which describe the, the voltage on, on trend, mm, how to say, the, 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 how the voltage on the port, uh, uh, port uh, I2 and I2 and V2, uh, port 2 can, uh, mm, in any case, so it describes the um, the power, the how the voltage and the current on the port tran transfer the uh, in the matrix. So when we have two, when we have two ports here, we will be able to determine uh, 
be able to just uh, cascade these um, metrics together so we can get the overall um, if overall response of the of the uh, system here we have some uh, simple examples of uh, what's the ABCD uh, what the ABCD matrix looks like when we just uh, have a resistor here we will have uh, uh, a equals one uh, which means that the voltage is um, transferred directly without any uh, any and when when the uh, the B B here so when we have a uh, uh, a equals one and uh, B equals uh, uh, zero. Uh, let's skip this button. There may be some mistake. Let me see. Mm, I want. Oh, uh, yes. It's not the same. Um, I got a, a bit confused. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, th this e uh, these equations are, are correct. Um, yes, it's a bit uh, strange. I will look into it today later. So let's see w what our reson resonator looks like. Um, the let's begin with uh, a simple uh, uh, theory uh, um, RLC resonator. The, the input I impedance of the resonator can be expressed as the um, the the resistor and uh, the the inductor and uh, the the impedance of the capacitor and uh, the the there will be energy in, in uh, stored in the in the uh, resonator so it uh, is related to the in the induct magnetic uh, energy stored in the resonator is related uh, is expressed uh, uh, with the inductor and uh, the electrical energy stored in the inductor is related to the uh, capacitor. So when when the two uh, when the electrical energy and uh, the uh, the magnetic er energy are equal, they begin to oscillate, and uh, the oscillate frequency is uh, uh, one one over square AOC. And another important. Uh, uh, factor to describe the uh, resonator is the is the uh, Q factor, quality factor. Um, it's, it is uh, defined by the energy stored and uh, divided by the energy dissipated. So uh, in the in the theory in a serial um, uh, IRC resonator, the dissipated power is um, by by the the main dissipated power is in the resistor, so the stored energy is the electron energy and the magnetic energy. So when we combine these two together, we will get to get the quality factor of the resonator. And uh, we also, uh, when in the real world, the the resonator will be connected to our external load. So we also need to know how <coughs> the what's the relation between the power dissipated on the external load and uh, the energy stored in the um, in the resonator. So we define the external load with uh, with the energy uh, average energy stored in the resonator and uh, the uh, energy dissipated on the load. So this is called uh, the uh, um, external quality factor or the coupling qu quality factor, and uh, the the quality f the the quality factor uh, can be related with each other uh, by the inversely um, inversely uh, uh, added. 
And uh, so this is the ov overall uh, quality factor. I, uh, the, so this is the quality factor of the, um, of the resonator. And uh, this is the external quality factor. And uh, this is the internal quality factor, which is related to the dissipation of the um, resonator itself. So when, when, when the frequency is around uh, the uh, resonator resonance frequency, we can um, express the input impedance of the circuit uh, in terms of the, of the quality factor. We can see that uh, it, it's quite, when it's related to the, uh, the resistor and uh, the quality factor here. So when we come to our, a practical uh, kit, um, there will be, so the <coughs> this is the inductor part, and uh, this is the uh, capacitor part. So it will be, uh, we will read the kit through a feed line. So the, the there will be a coupling between this, uh, between the uh, feed line and uh, the kit. So the, the voltage generated on the, uh, on the, um, on the uh, resonator part by the, by the readout uh, sig signal is, uh, is V2 equals uh, the, the mutual coup uh, magnetic coupling and uh, the uh, deviation of the um, current. And if we assume that this is a single frequency, and uh, we can see that it's uh, uh, just a time harmonic, just a times j omega. So in the resonator part, the, the current in the part two, uh, by the Kirchhoff uh, theory, we can calculate the, the current in the, in the, in the uh, resonator. So in, in return, that we can uh, calculate the, the voltage that uh, uh, the, re the resonator generated uh, on the uh, readout part. So we can, s we can define the, the voltage and uh, the current here at the effective impedance of the resonator. So when we so the, the circuit can be equivalent into this form. Uh, so when, when so it will be easy to write the write, write the the circuit in the form of the A B C D matrix. Mm. So the uh, we can also calculate the, the uh, external quality factor and uh, the power dissipated. Um, and finally, we can uh, uh, convert the uh, ABCD matrix to, to S prim parameter, which is, the, uh, which is the main result we need for our kits. Um, so after several uh, mathematic uh, operations, we will be able to get the, um, the expression for the, uh, the S parameters for the resonators. Um, so here, here is the... Um, the explanation of the uh, internal quality factor and uh, uh, the, the the quality factor of the keys, uh, how how they what what they means, the the quality factor of the keys determines the the width of the resonator, when the the resonance frequency is uh, uh, is uh, when the frequency is zero point uh, five um, times the uh, the quality factor of the kits, we see that the the res the depths of the mm, we see that the the resonator is uh, uh, the transmission is uh, three dB below the baseline. So 
This is the 3 dB uh, roll off of the resonator. When for the internal quality factor, when the, the, when the, uh, when the frequency is the, uh, deviated by 0 0.5, the internal quality factor, the, the, the transmission is uh, 3 dB above the, uh, above the minimum point. So this is, um, this is the um, effect of the internal quality factor and uh, the external quality factor on the shape of the keys. Uh, here is an another example of the uh, parallel resonator. In a similar way, we actually this one, the this one is the um, uh, qu quarter wavelength keys, which has been shown in uh, in Professor Smoot's talk. So the this one for the qu uh, quarter wavelength keys, uh, it is electro electrically coupled. So uh, it's coupled by a capacitor. And similarly, we can, we can get uh, the same uh, expression for the, uh, for the uh, inductively coupled keys. And, uh, and uh, with the same definition of the uh, quality factor and uh, the external quality factor, Uh, when we uh, plot the um, external, when we plot the real part of the transmission and the imagery part of the transmission on the, on the 2D plane, we will get a, a resonance circle. So we, we will see here that uh, it, is, uh, mm, it is perfectly a circle and the, the diameter of the circle is uh, the radius of the uh, of the circle is determined by one minus uh, two s two one minimum over two. Uh, here is the um, is the is the phase change, which is actually what we are going to detect in kids. So when we when uh, when the frequency is uh, uh, the resonance frequency is here, so when there is a, a pho photon incident upon this uh, uh, incident upon this uh, resonator, <coughs> the the the, uh, the there will be phase change in the resonator. So the the phase change is defined by the angle uh, to the uh, to the rotation angle to the um, to the resonator circle. And uh, the phase change uh, and uh, the frequency change can be related by the, the quality factor and uh, the resonance frequency. Uh, another important thing for kids is the, is the kinetic inductance fraction, so which is uh, the, the kinetic inductance uh, plus for, for a normal uh, for a usual uh, strip, the the kids there will be magnetic uh, um, uh, inductance and uh, the kinetic inductance in the superconductor. So when the uh, the the magnetic uh, inductance is mainly related to the uh, energy uh, stored in the in the in the surrounding, and uh, the ki kinetic inductance is mainly in due to the kinetic induct uh, the inductance effect of the superconductor. So this, uh, this, um, this one is the total uh, kinetic inductance of the uh, of a superconducting strip. So we, we will define a, a kinetic inductance fraction, which, mean which we, we, are we need to know how, how much the kinetic inductance um, uh, proposed um, occupy in the in the total kinetic uh, uh, the total inductance, and uh, here is the uh, how the how the um, resonance frequency change with the with the uh, with the total uh, with the kinetic inductance. We see that when when we have a larger 
uh, kinetic induction fraction, we will be able to get a larger um, frequency shift. What are typical values you're offering? Alpha. Yeah. Mm, it depends on material. <coughs> for example, for aluminum, this one might be 0 0.1. And uh, for the titanium nitride, this uh, value is close to 1. So next, we will determine how how the how the uh, how the um, quasi how the quasi particle in the uh, in the superconductor change uh, change uh, when the no this is a response to the photon when when there is photon instant uh, in the on the kits. There will be uh, there will be a quasi particle number change, and uh, this is uh, how we relate the instant uh, power to the uh, to the to the phase change. Uh, so we will calculate the uh, the angle change with respect to the um, the quasi particle number in in the following way, and uh, we will see that the uh, the d theta is mainly caused by the change of the frequency, and uh, the d the the change of the frequency is caused by the the change in the kinetic inductance, and uh, then the kinetic inductance change is caused by the change of the quasi particle number, and uh, the qua the quasi particle number can be um, the change in the kinetic inductance can be. Um, can be further calculated uh, with respect to the conductivity of the material and uh, how the how the um, the, uh, the quasi particle num density change to the temperature. Uh, this is because the uh, the the temperature change, the uh, the fluctuation of the uh, quasi particle density caused by the instant photon and uh, the the quasi of the temperature are the same. So here, the temperature is is completely normal because there's no uh, sort of hypothesis of thermalization. Yeah, there is thermalization. The there is, and um, this is mean that the the um, the res the response of the sigma sigma two is the same uh, caused by the instant photon because it, it changes the, the sigma. And uh, the, when the temperature change, it can also uh, change the, the sigma too. So they are equal, equal to each other. So I to for simplify the calculation, we just uh, related the to the temperature. We consider it's a temperature change. Oh, it's just the temperature, sort of the quasi-particle gas yes. right around the gap. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, one way uh, from from the from the simplified uh, multi-spotting theory, we can uh, be we will be able to uh, calculate the uh, the the sigma change with with respect to the temperature, and uh, then we can uh, the. <coughs> The quasi particle density is related to the temperature by this equation, which we have already introduced in the previous part. So, finally, we will be able to get to the responsivity of the kids. Uh, the, the, the first terms are, are, material, are related to the material we use. For example, the delta is the energy gap, and, uh, and also related to the temperature we work. Uh, and uh, the, the, this, this term is the <coughs> is we are interested in, and alpha is uh, uh, the Q. The, this is the quality factor of the uh, of the kids, and uh, this is the qu quasi quasi particle number, and this is the, the volume of the kids. So. When we want to maximize the response, 
we, we want to use uh, the material with higher connecting inductance and uh, make the detector working at a lower temperature. And uh, then we, we also want to improve the quality factor of the resonator. And, uh, and finally, we, we would also like to redu reduce the volume of the, uh, of the resonator. Because when you have a, sl a smaller volume, you will have less quasi-particle inside. And uh, when the photon comes, it will, uh, the, the proportion uh, change in the quasi-particle quasi number will be much larger. Uh, so here is the uh, important uh, um, equations for the from the uh, resonator theory. Uh, next, I'm going to talk about the noises in the kits. Um, one of the very important parameter for the detectors is the is the noi noise equivalent power. So it's de defined as the signal. Uh, signal that gives a, a signal ratio to one in in one hertz band, but it cannot usually be measured directly. So the usual me the usual way to measure the NEP is uh, is to define as the the response of is the the noise divided its uh, responsivity. So we need to measure the spectra uh, noise spectrum of the uh, keys and uh, the to measure the responsivity of, of the de detector. And these two terms are related to the row off of the, um, of the signal, which is because the, um, the resonator is actually a filter. So when, when, that's, um, when the signal passes through a filter, it will be round off by the filter. So and this is rounded by the um, quasi-particle lifetime, and this is uh, the, um, the response time of the resonator. One of the fundamental uh, noise for kids is the uh, generation and the, the quasi-particle uh, generation and the recombination noise. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's because the, the quasi-particles in the superconductor are in thermal equilibrium. So when the, the Cooper pairs will break and uh, recombine, this will generate the uh, cause the fluctuation in the qu quasi-particle number in the in kids, so uh, it will show fluctuation in the complex conductivity, and uh, the the noise uh, the the no, uh, NEP of the generation recombination noise is uh, on the order of time to minus 19, uh, which is a fundamental uh, noise limit. And the other noise is related to the uh, photon noise, which is the Poisson noise uh, fracture. And uh, yeah, this is the common common uh, photon noise which can uh, encounter in, in every detector like uh, TS or other barometers. And the other one is the readout noise, um, uh, because the kit works in the microwave frequency. So the readout system will um, generate a certain noise, and uh, and uh, the especially the noise of the low noise amplifier, which is on the first stage of the of the ampli amplification system, and when the this is the the noise uh, the temperature uh, noise temperature of the cascadia, cascadia system, so we can see uh, the G one and G G2 is the gain of the system. When, when, the, when we have, large, for example, when we have uh, uh, 1,000 times amplification on the first stage, the, the noise on the second stage will be uh, much, much reduced. So the main contrib noise contribution is from the first stage, uh, which means that we need to use very low no uh, noise amplifier on the first stage. And uh, the noise temperature of the amplifier uh, will cause the phase fluctuation in the in kids, and it is rela related to, uh, to the uh, fluctuation by its noise temperature and the, the the input signal. So when when the input signal is small, the the um, the fluctuation in phase will be relatively large. 
And uh, the other mm, noise is uh, called a two-level system noise. Uh, this, this kind of noise is quite special in, in kids. Um, the two-level two no two system noise originate from the uh, amorphous interface between the, uh, the superconductor and uh, the, the base substrate. Uh, when, when the temperature is, is low, there will be two-level system in, in the interface. So this will cause the fluctuation in the dielectric constant in the substrate. So it will generate a certain phase noise. Uh, currently, no accurate mo model is available. And we can see that this, kind, this noise is, uh, is several orders above the uh, amplitude noise in the beginning. Uh, the two-level system noise is also related to the readout power. When you have higher input power, the, the readout system, uh, the, the noise will be uh, reduced. And it is also related to the um, um, different uh, substrate, especially when, uh, when, when the sapphire is used, the, the, the noise is uh, almost one order lower than the, mm, than the, than the one used uh, the silicon substrate. This is because the, uh, the, sub, uh, the surface of the um, sapphire is more, um, how to say, is, is single crystal. So there will be less um, oxidized on the surface of the, of the uh, of sapphire. So there will be less air area for the oxidizer and uh, the uh, superconductor. Uh, there is a semi-empirical um, semi model, model for the kids, uh, which is, um, and we see here that the, the filling factor, the, the F is the filling factor of, of the uh, TLS, and uh, it is related to the, um, the electric field strength in, in, the, in the area. And, uh, we can see from here when the temperature increase, uh, this this term will will, will decrease. So the the um, the, res the quality factor of the resonator will will increase. Um, there are several ways to uh, to decrease the um, two-level system noise. The one way is to remove the oxide layer on the surface of the silicon, which is usually done by hydrogen fluoride, flor flor and uh, also use the uh, single crystal substrate like the sapphire. And uh, the other way is to increase the area of the uh, interdigital capacitor. Here, here is an example of how, how the TOS noise can be reduced. Uh, the people etched the, um, the silicon part in the sup superconductor. So th in, in this way, the, this part can be, uh, the two-level system noise generated by this part can be reduced. Uh, they have shown that this can have a factor of seven reduction of the uh, two-level system noise. Uh, and now, uh, by this careful um, tr treatment, uh, the kids has already demonstrated photon limited noise, uh, which which has been demonstrated by the group uh, in Esron and uh, in in the NIST. Uh, so, yeah, and kids is um, already be able to uh, compare with TES in terms of noise, uh, and it's uh, quite a, uh, how to say competitive with TS. Uh, okay, this is my first part.